Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, we're getting towards the end of July now and I thought it was about time I did another tour. So the last tour I did was back in May and at that time the garden was more or less full. But here in July things are a little bit different because now we're in that transition phase where some of the old crops, the peas, the broad beans, the shallots and so on are leaving the ground and we've got plenty of space now to start restocking for the autumn and winter period. Well since I'm stood right next to them I might as well begin with the potatoes. So these are our main crop potatoes and I mean we get our potatoes started pretty early in the year so it, these are more or less going over now. Some of them are finished and I think I've got a couple of weeks growth left from the others so they will be ready to use very soon and lined up along the garage wall here we've got our collection of newly planted pots so in the smaller pots we've got Nicola and in the larger pots we've got Charlotte and they will be cropping I suppose end of October and into November so moving into the greenhouses now, the tomatoes are doing really well this year. We've got plenty of good sized fruit. So most of these are heirloom Italian varieties and I do like these large tomatoes. They've got great flavour and they're really handy for the salad as well as for cooking with. So these fruits are a pretty handy size. This one is Pantano. That's from Rome. Here we've got Belmonte. That's from down south in Calabria. Some of these are really big fruits. Canestrino de Luca here. That's from, from Tuscany. Now these aren't far from ripe actually. And we've been we've been harvesting tons of tomatoes already. But with these really large fruits, you don't want to let them get too red, not with these heritage varieties. The tomatoes ripen from the inside out so if you wait until the outside is a fairly uniform and deep red colour then the texture inside is gone a little bit too far. So these are only well a day or so away from being perfectly ripe. At the end here we've got a truly monstrous fruit. This is Rosa di Sorrento um, as the name suggests, this is a pink skin tomato. So this is almost ready, I think, very soon. Again, maybe only a day or so, and, and this one will be ready to pick. So down the centre of the beds, we've got some French beans. Now, earlier in the year, we were harvesting tons of beans off of these plants. But now we've just sort of tied them up to sticks to keep the beans off of the ground and we're letting those mature for the seeds, um, mostly for culinary purposes though we could of course use those next year for planting. Down the outside between the marigolds we've got some peppers, just the one fruit on this at the moment though there are new, new ones coming. Some of them have got quite a lot more fruit on than others. This one is quite heavily laden. So this is a, a bell pepper. Uh, these are the bull's horn type. Um, these are just starting to turn colour. So the peppers in this greenhouse are yellow. And we've got the red ones in the other greenhouse. Again, we've got plenty of fruit on these now. And young ones coming. They took a while to get going. Um, but I think they're all, they're all reasonably productive now. Here we've got the early rivers peach. They're coming a little bit late this year, but um, these, these are ready and, and we've, only got, we've only got half a dozen of these left now. But this is a really delicious peach. Um, it's coloured up quite nicely despite the dodgy weather. So uh, in a day or two, this one will be ready to eat. We've got the grapes in here protected in these little organza bags to keep the blackbirds off. They came in and 
caused a lot of mischief in here, stripped a lot of these bunches, but some of them are doing okay. And where I thinned these earlier, they're starting to swell up now and, and fill out. And with a bit of luck, we're going to get some nice grapes, despite the blackbirds. The other greenhouse here is much the same. We've got red peppers in this one, a mixture of tomatoes. Some of the smaller varieties are in this greenhouse. And we've got more of the French beans. The trusses on this tomato are really ridiculous. I mean, this fruit has set. It's going to be a long time before all of these are ripe. They, they develop over quite a long period when the truss is this sort of size, but we've got plenty of ripe fruit coming here. This is an old German variety called Blondkopfgen. And, well, it's, it's immensely productive. You really don't need many of these in the garden. It's fruiting all the way up. This is an interesting variety. This is one of the old potato leaf sort. There is a bit of curl on these leaves, but that, that's not a problem. And this is Pianolo del Vesuvio. It's producing some nice trusses of fruit. They're a useful size, actually. They're not too small. I, I had thought they were going to be smaller than that, but I think this is quite a handy plant, and I do like to have one of the old potato leaf varieties here. Along the bottom, the basil is cropping like crazy. It's really important to come through and keep pinching this out low down to encourage those side shoots to develop. And the more you pinch out, the more you get. It's, um, during the summer, it's very easy to maintain more basil than you can use just by keeping on with the pinching out. And that also puts off flowering for as long as possible. The grapes in here are the Muscat of Alexandria. They've also been bagged to keep the blackbirds away. The blackbirds hadn't started on these yet because these are a lot less ripe than the black Hamburg and the other greenhouse. We've also got a good crop of figs coming on, on this plant. This is Rouge de Bordeaux. It's got quite a way to go yet, but we will get these probably early autumn. And these will be a a dark fig. They have a, a, a dark purple, bluish purple skin and inside it is rich red flesh. Absolutely delicious. It's like honey. And it looks like we're going to get quite a few off of this plant. I had pruned these pretty hard so we didn't, we didn't get any of the braver crop but these are the, the main crop figs. And they will ripen perfectly well here in the greenhouse. So. We will definitely be getting those this year. Our other fig tree here, this is Brogiotto Bianco. It produces green figs, quite large, quite a nice taste. Not, not as rich as the Rouge de Bordeaux, but a pleasant fig nonetheless. We haven't got anything on this this year. Again, I pruned this really hard back and I've been working to fan out those branches across the space here. and sort the structure of the tree out and it is looking very nice but no crop this year we should get a nice crop from these next year and the peppers in here the same sort we've got a bull's horn type and a, and a bell pepper um, none of these are turning color yet but some of them are pretty good size so i'm quite happy with these won't be long before they start to ripen up and yeah, we should get a reasonable crop. Um, there's quite a few on here already, and some of the new flowers are setting, so it certainly hasn't given up. We've got plenty of young fruit coming. So if we get a reasonable autumn and these plants keep going, then we should get plenty of fruit off of them. So now on to the polytunnel. So again, we've got some French beans that I'm allowing to mature here. The aubergines are a little bit sad looking. Some of the leaves have been scorched in the, in the heat, but well, there is some fruit starting to show up. This is Rosa Sumata, which means pink tinged, and that it certainly is. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that one later. Um, 
and one of the other plants we've got the other variety Violetta di Florenza so the purple of Florence and again it's it's a similar sort of fruit it's a large round aubergine rather than a long one and that fruit is looking very nice indeed so we've got the same varieties of tomato in here mostly the large fruited sorts and these are doing really well so these plants aren't grafted those in the, the other greenhouses are, are grafted but these are the the spares that couldn't be grafted or, or where I didn't want to graft them and well they're doing pretty well I think there's more fruit perhaps on the grafted plants but but actually there is looking along this row there is a ton of fruit to come on these I mean we've picked many kilos of these tomatoes already they've been ripening over for a few weeks now and we're getting a really great crop off of them the sweet corn in the polytunnel is done pretty well I think I did put some effort into making sure these were well pollinated and well it does look and feel as though we've got quite full cobs here I do hope so um, and it won't be long before those are ready in the cold frames here I've got the melons and they're doing okay So this one is Prescott, it's looking pretty good. I mean, this is a pretty big melon when it's mature, so it's got a long way to go. I'm also probably carrying a few more fruits than I would ideally do. Um, I've got two there and there's at least one more off of this plant. That plant I can see has at least four fruit. And I did say I was only going to put two on each one of these plants but oh, it's so difficult to remove a nice fruit when it's growing but we'll have to see how it does I, mean, I really do want good quality melons but we are early in the season so um, I think it should be able to bring those to maturity quite happily so I'm going to leave them and, and see what happens I don't think I'll allow any more to set though because that is more than enough in this frame we've got Sucran de Tours and I'm sure that one there is going to be the very first one to ripen. It won't be too long now before that one is ready. I'm just waiting for that telltale aroma to fill the frame and then I shall cut it. So outdoors now, behind me I've got the area where we've had onions and shallots and, and most of that has been cleared now. So all of the shallots are gone, the garlic's been removed and the onions won't be too far behind. So here I've got some long red florence. The tops are going over so after they've had some sunny weather I shall think about lifting these. These are a pretty good sized bulb, I'm quite happy with those. My other onion patch is in the border here and I've never used this border for growing onions. I'm not sure they've done especially well. Some are great, others are not so good, but we've got a mixed bag here again. Some have been sown singly and some multi-sown and all sorts of different varieties. Um, I think some of these onions are really very nice and others, I'm not sure I'm going to bother again. Certainly not in this border. This is Rose de Roscoff and and these have generally produced really nice bulbs. They're good solid bulbs, beautiful pink colour to them. These are going to be great. Uh, they just need a little bit of better weather and then I will lift these. I've just had the one that has bolted here and obviously I'll use that one first but the others should store pretty well. So here I've got some of the sort of cipollini as they're, they're known, these, these small flat onions that are very common in, in Italy. Uh, I think this one is Boritana and they've done okay. Um, there's a few that have bolted. I'm, I must confess I'm a little bit disappointed with that because these are all grown from seed and well I didn't expect these to run to seed so I may try a different variety of these next year because I'm not I'm not that impressed with the number that have 
gone. And at the end here, we've got a late sowing of um, some spare Roscoth seed, actually. Um, I didn't have great germination from the first batch of seed and the seed merchant sent a replacement pack. Now it was getting a little bit late, but I sowed these in, in pretty large clumps. And the idea here is to have some small onions. These are gonna be great for pickling. They're just the right size. So these went in long after the, the others were, were done and, and in much larger groups. That's why they are much smaller. But there's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. If you want pickling onions, sow them in a clump like that and, and you're gonna get smaller bulbs from them. And quite efficient use of space, I think. I will have a lot of bulbs here um, from a fairly modest patch. In the border behind me, I had tons of broad beans. Um, the Sutton along the fence, some more of those in the front and some other varieties along the edges and they have cropped like crazy. Uh, we've actually got a freezer full of broad beans but now they've all been removed and we've just got these squash plants being trained around in a, in a spiral in each one of these beds. So the first one here is a bit of a monster. It's a very vigorous plant and there's a really huge squash here. Um, you can see just for scale my hand there in the picture. Um, this is doing really well. It is the only fruit on this vine so far. Um, I don't know if we're going to get anything else. I hope so, we should do. It's very vigorous and it, it is doing very well. It's a healthy looking plant at the moment. But the, early, the earlier fruits did not set. It was quite early in the year. And then as soon as this one set, it hasn't actually produced much in the way of new flowers. So it may just be putting all of its energy into this one fruit, which is not really what I want. You never get that many fruits off of the, the larger fruited varieties, but I, I would like more than one. And, well, there's still plenty of time, so we might get that yet. The next one is a, is a butternut squash. It's got one small fruit here at the moment. This particular one has not been very productive. Its neighbour has much more fruit on it. Uh, well, this is quite common. So this, this fruit has started to develop, but it's not going anywhere. You can see it's yellowed and, and wrinkled and, and it's soft. So this probably wasn't properly pollinated. Hiding amongst these nettle seedlings, get out. Um, we've got a nice, nice little fruit there. We've got some larger examples in here as well. We've got quite a few on this part. Um, this is the Delicata squash. Now, these have not been setting very well at all. Now we've got just, just one maturing nicely on this plant, but we do have lots of small ones, but like this one here, I'm not, I don't, I don't think that one's gonna be any good. This is, this is already soft on the end. It's, I mean, that's rubbish. These haven't been particularly productive for me this year. And I think I might go back to sweet dumpling. That one produces really well. Well, this fruit should mature reasonably well. I put tons of borage in the garden this year and the bees have been going crazy, but they've been helping with pollination, so that's a good thing. Well, that is typical. It's been sunny all morning, and as soon as I start this tour, the rain comes, but I'm gonna carry on regardless. It's not a lot to see on the apple trees here. We do have some apples, but these were cut back really hard in the winter to encourage some new growth. And well, we've certainly got plenty of new growth. They've gone quite mad, but I will be tackling the summer pruning probably towards the end of August, as soon as these have stopped actively growing. 
we lost a lot of pear blossom in the frosts in the spring, but some of these have, despite that, still put on quite a lot of fruit. And these are looking pretty good. Now I've gone over these trees and I've removed tons of malformed fruits that um, were affected by the frost, but there's still plenty of fruit here. If we get a, another couple of nice months, we might get some decent pears. Well, this variety is Louise Bon, and this is a really delicious pear. It's one of my favorites, but it does flower early, and this one was most severely affected by the frost, so there's not that much fruit on here. This is a really productive variety, so ordinarily this tree would be laden with pears, but, well, at least we've got some. Our oldham and peas are long gone now. We, we just haven't got round to clearing the bed, but I mean, they, they reach the top of the structure here, a good, a good eight, eight feet tall, maybe more, and the crop was really incredible. They had a rough start to the year. They had some damage from the cold winds, but yeah, we've had a really great crop despite all of the poor weather, so I'm quite happy with their performance. On the left here, we're still cropping our first sowing of kale. And I mean, these are gonna keep going for quite a while yet. Um, and we're getting plenty of harvest off of those. We've got some small swede in there. They're just sort of getting established. Something's been having a bit of a nibble. That's not ideal. I'm not a huge fan of the swede, so we don't grow too many of these. I've got, I've got a patch this size at the other end of the bed as well, and, and then that is it. The red drumhead cabbage is starting to heart up now. I mean, I could take these, I suppose, at any time, though those hearts will develop for a little while yet. One thing that's been a bit rubbish for me this year is French beans, and I've, I've never had a problem with beans. I don't know what I've done wrong. I think a little bit of neglect and some um, I don't know, some of the dry conditions haven't helped, so I have actually lost a, a few plants here. You can see these crispy leaves, so that's not ideal. And I've, I've got replacements in there that are coming on now, but I am getting some beans. These are always a fairly rustic sort. This is Meravelia di Venezia, and it's not the most handsome of beans, but it is absolutely delicious. These are buttery and, well, they're just, they're just lovely. And we've got some more flowers coming, so. And we have been cropping these. Um, possibly my least impressive bean harvest ever, but, well, we're still getting some, so I'm not gonna complain too much. In this bed, we had broad beans and peas and, well, as you can see, the frames are now empty. We've cleared those peas away. We've got a new planting of beetroot. In this bed, we've got the courgettes and more squash, butternuts and delicata. And then we've got a planting of golden bantam sweet corn, which is ridiculously tall. The courgettes are immensely productive as always, and they're producing really nice quality fruit. This one is Striato di Napoli. The small fruits are delicious, and if you let them get a little bit bigger, I mean, they can get huge. They still retain a pretty good flavor. They don't get too wet and, and nasty, but yeah. Climbing up the trellis here, we've got some butternut squash and we've got, well, we've got a few fruit that have set successfully here. And two more over there. And there's another hiding under the leaves. Down the bottom, we've got a couple of delicata squash. And, uh, and there's another delicata and hopefully this one yeah, this one looks like it's going to develop okay. So, they're not doing too bad. I'm not sure how this 
corn is going to do this year. This is an old open pollinated variety. It's producing enough cobs. I mean, I've got three on this, on this plant here, but conditions have been really awful for pollination. Um, it's very windy right now. Well, that's not a problem, but it's been so wet and miserable as soon as these silks appeared. So I wasn't able to do any manual pollination. You shouldn't need to outdoors, but I, I, would, have, I would have perhaps done some if the weather had been reasonable, but it, but it hasn't been. So I don't know. I, I've just got to hope that these have been reasonably well pollinated naturally. In this bed we've got beetroot. Now these have been in here for quite a long time. They took a long time to get going in the spring because it was so cold. But there are reasonable roots there now and the, the plants are starting to look a little bit ragged so I ought to start harvesting this and clearing that ground. Further on we've got some dill that's now running to seed, we've got some Chantenay carrots, um, they're probably ready just about any time now. Then we've got some parsnips, now I did have Hamburg parsley in here but I think only one or two of them germinated so I dug those out and I sowed some more parsnips, now they're a little bit behind the others but hopefully we'll still get some roots. And at the end, my parsley is now running to seed, so I need to start off some more. In the next bed, we've got our main sowing of parsnips, and I'm really happy with these this year. The plants are looking pretty good, and I'm quite hopeful of some decent roots. And next to that, we've got our main crop carrots. They look slightly ragged at the moment because I've recently gone through and thinned them out a bit. I should have done that a lot earlier, but well, they're looking okay now and hopefully we'll get some decent roots off of those. These will be used sort of late autumn and, and through the winter. The bees are loving the little flower patch here. And although I don't do videos of the flowers, I do like to have some in the kitchen garden because it's really great to encourage all the pollinators in and and of course some of the some of the flowers like the tagetes and the marigolds they're very good for discouraging some of the uh, pests so yeah I do like to put them in and it's it's always nice to have a splash of color the border here is undergoing a bit of a transformation at the moment the Swiss chard that went in in the spring, well that is quite persistently running to seed now. I keep cutting off these flower spikes to try and just keep it going for as long as possible but I mean it's getting quite persistent now. I've got new chard plants that I need to get in but, but despite that we're still getting a reasonable harvest off of these and these have been really productive. And it's one of my favourite of the green leafy veg. The new asparagus bed is doing okay. They're getting whipped about in this wind. Um, I think there are, there are a couple of crowns that did not develop. They arrived really early in the year. And of course they then had to endure some pretty grim weather. But, but most of them are here. And, and one of the benefits with this old open pollinated variety I've got here is that I will get seed from these. I can see there's a couple of female plants in this mix and I'm gonna get some berries off of those and then I can propagate and fill in those empty spaces. I've got the remains of the last of the broad beans here and my final sowing of peas. All of that is gone now and I'm pretty happy with the timing, to be honest. I don't really want the broad beans and peas going much beyond the end of July they're really at their best earlier in the year and the broad beans are already a little bit tough and and even even uh, removing them from their skins uh, they're not they're not the same quality they were say a month ago so I don't really I don't really want the this crop to go sort of 
any later in the year. So I'm, I'm very happy with how they've done. And I'm really happy with the fact that they've flowered and, and podded really well in this bed because this is a more or less north facing border. So it's quite shady in this back half, but they've done pretty well. So I will definitely be using this again. And I think during the, during the hotter part of the year, having them in this border is really quite beneficial because neither of the peas or the beans really like the heat, the peas in particular. We're halfway through the brassica patch here. We've got the uh, Cavallo Nero, that's going to go on cropping for a long time. We've just got the remains of the last bit of broccoli here. But I've got some more, they're only seedlings, and I will be getting those sorted out fairly soon. Our Calabrese and Cauliflower that were here, they're all gone now. And now we're working our way through the cabbage patch. This handsome fellow is Brunswick. It's got a nice solid head on it there. And then we've got one of my old favorites, Copenhagen Market. That always does really well. It's a nice compact cabbage. It's really ideal for close plantings like this. And uh, the heads are usually compact and they're ideal uh, either for cooking or for coleslaw. It's a really it's a really good variety that and pretty quick to mature. Uh, along here I've got my last minute and entirely unnecessary planting of onions. Now these were sets but because it was so cold early in the year they went out really late and for that reason they are mostly pretty small but still they are going to be quite handy in the kitchen. Some could be pickles, others are of a a better size for other purposes so I don't mind that they haven't produced particularly impressive bulbs but there are plenty of them. This was entirely an afterthought so I haven't really been relying on these for the crop. As you can see they've mostly fallen over now so ah, if we get a few days of better weather I can then lift these and get them drying. The celeriac is looking really great this year and I'm hopeful for some decent sized roots. Um, we've had a bit of wet weather lately which of course this stuff has really been enjoying. Now I've, I've been stripping these outer leaves off of here. As soon as they start to bend down they, they split up the centre of the leaf and then you need to pull those off and that encourages this bulbous part to develop. We've already got a reasonable bit of root here, so hopefully we're going to get a good crop off of these. Under the mesh I've got some leeks. Now they went in a little bit late but they've got their roots down now and they are growing away so I'm quite hopeful of getting some reasonable stems off of those later in the year. And finally in the corner we've got our current salad patch. Well, there's plenty of pickings to take off of that, but I've got some new plants on the go to replace these later on. So in this greenhouse, I mostly have small fruited peppers and chilies. I do have a couple of the larger sorts. Those in the other greenhouses are all pretty large fruited, so the bell peppers and the bull's horn sort. And they are great and they're, they're going to be delicious but it takes a long time for those fruits to develop and ripen whereas the smaller fruited varieties well they produce a huge quantity of fruit and it ripens more quickly so that's quite an advantage that's why I like to have a mixture of the two. So it's getting a bit crowded in here and I should come through and remove some of these tatty old leaves the new growth is, is a lot healthier, but I, I want to remove these old, old leaves and tidy these plants up a bit, but the fruit is just wonderful. This is Dolce de Bergamo. That's a nice looking pepper. It produces, well, quite long fruit and, well, they're not too small. They're smaller than a bull's horn pepper, but it's not far off and, 
and these are going to be fantastic because of the size of the fruit this is the slowest to ripen of these um, but there's a couple on this plant that are on their way and it won't be long before I'm picking those and then we've got the padron peppers this is a really good size for a, a padron pepper and I've been taking these green which is the I think the more common way of taking them but also some of them are ripening to red and they're not too hot they have a really nice flavor very fruity when they're ripe and yeah these are these are cropping really well um, this one is the Goria pepper this is the Basque chili pepper and these are lovely specimens again it's not too hot a variety but it's got a really nice flavor um, I ought to come through and take all of the ripe fruit off of these to encourage more fruit to develop I mean we do have plenty of green ones here too but it's a good idea to at least for the chilies to remove them as soon as you can here we've got a cayenne pepper this is Joe's long and well you can see where it gets its name these are really nice fruits I can use those green of course but I think most of those I want to allow to turn red and then I will probably dry or freeze them for use throughout the year I've got quite a good crop of those coming um, these plants weren't great when they went in but unusually because I don't normally bother I, I pinch these out to encourage better side shoots and, and that has quite clearly worked quite well I've got a labeling mishap here because I thought this was going to be a Hungarian hot wax and it's another Joe's long but never mind that means that for the first time I've only got one hot wax this year uh, normally I have lots of these these are lovely peppers really great flavor and, and fantastic for pickling they're cropping well and they're very tasty so although I've only got the one plant I'm getting a few fruit off of it this one's Frigitello it's cropping really well we've got great fruit here and this is another one that might often be used green but it's very nice allowed to ripen I've got one almost ripe specimen at the back that I will be taking next but but you can see there's plenty of fruit here that's going to ripen in the next few days This funny specimen here with its characteristic wrinkly curled shape. This is Lombardo. Well, this is an interesting one because I suppose, strictly speaking, it's a chili, but it's rather mild. Most of them are more or less sweet peppers. One or two will have a little bit of a bite. This would be very nice pickled, um, but it's also very nice thrown in a pan with other roasted veg and, and for other purposes. It's great when they're green like this, but again, they ripen nicely and they become sweeter when they're red. And this really shows why this sort of pepper is so handy to have in the garden, because while those larger sorts are just thinking about producing some fruit and just starting to ripen, these are well underway. We've picked loads of these already. This one's starting to colour up, but it's really great earlier in the season to have these small ones that you can use before the big ones are ready. And they are absolutely laden. And my bathtub full of squash is doing reasonably okay. The melon plants that are sprawling about the front, well, they've not produced anything yet, but I rather suspect they will do. Um, most of the flowers at the moment, I think, are male flowers, but if we have some reasonable weather for them, there's a chance, I think, that we might get a couple of melons here. The squash at the back, while well, they're doing okay, we've got a couple of pretty big specimens here on both sides, but not a lot else. There are a few running around the base of the bathtub and then this is a more recent development. 
I'm restricted on the space here, of course, because I've just got this, this height where I can tie these plants in. So what I've been doing is letting those stems run up and flower. And if those fruits haven't set for whatever reason, whether they've been aborted or whether they haven't been properly pollinated, if that stem's not producing anything, I've cut it off because there's no point having that, that stem there being unproductive. I need that space to, to train up a new stem. So unfortunately, the fruits off of this stem, none of those set properly. So I've, I've cut that back and then I've got a new stem here that is growing up and hopefully this one will produce some more fruit for us. I've done exactly the same with this one in the middle. Now this is um, a different plant altogether. This is the Tromba di Albenga or Trombacino as it's sometimes known. And this produces, well it's a summer squash I, really. I mean it can be kept as a winter squash but um, these fruits are really great. You can see down here I've got some young fruit developing and these will flower and provided they get pollinated, which, which hopefully with all the bees around they will, these produce the most fantastic summer squash. Um, I quite fancy these as an alternative to the courgettes. They're a little bit firmer, got an interesting flavour. I mean, they get quite big, but we had a load of these off of this plant earlier in the year, and then it stopped producing. So all of the growth sort of halfway up the wall was unproductive. None of the fruit set. And I think it was just because we had so many lower down on the plant. So again, I cut these back and this is, this is coming off of a side shoot. And when it's a little bit longer, I'll tie this in. But as soon as I cut this plant back, it started producing new fruit. And in that way, I can keep this productive whilst containing it within the space I've got available here. Well, I think that covers most of the garden now. There is the fruit cage, of course, but that's still a work in progress and I don't think there's too much interesting to see there. So that will be it for this tour. I'll probably do another one in a couple of months time and we'll see how things develop. So that's it for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.